The destruction of Jeremy Mayfield is complete. It's inevitable that no matter what the outcome of the trial of Mayfield versus NASCAR, this driver's career is over. But the truth, which in court is a complete abstract, is that it's really NASCAR on trial. Can they convince a jury of 12 people that Jeremy Mayfield is a drug abuser and that their system of drug testing isn't flawed? Well, let's think about that for a moment. There's this little thing in American law that we call reasonable doubt. Now, that concept has worked just as it should have in many cases, but on the other hand, it's set free hundreds of thousands of guilty people, but by and large, it is still the best system of justice the world has to offer. But you see it happen when you get to court all the time. It's all about how much money can you spend, how many lawyers can you bring to the party, what information are they going to allow the jury to hear, and just how good is that salesman, we tend to call them lawyers, can he convince 12 people to vote his way? Well, in the curious case of Jeremy Mayfield, a little poetic license of a movie title, a lot is at stake. Mayfield's already trashed, whether he's guilty or not. It's NASCAR who's got the most to lose here. A lot of people out there don't like what NASCAR looks like right now. They perceive the sanctioning body as having abandoned the little guy, a bully, a giant, but still a private corporation that settles cases as a matter of course, you know, the cost of doing business. But this time they've staked a lot on what happens with Mayfield. NASCAR says he's a drug abuser based on a drug test that came up positive. What they don't say is that initial drug tests come up positive in a large number of cases, and that's why they tend to have two samples. The problem is, is that when that first test is positive, they got to back it up with two additional tests. Now, under the federal guidelines, those confirmations should be two separate labs that are independent. NASCAR doesn't do that. They use the same lab. As big a player as NASCAR is, they use one lab. Their response to this? We're a private company. We don't have to adhere to the federal guidelines. How convenient. They come across to many people as arrogant, playing judge and jury under the guise of safety. Mayfield claims he's never ingested metamphetamines. All right? He does say that he takes Adderall for ADHD and another drug for allergies, as do a number of very nervous drivers right now. He further states that NASCAR provides the drivers with no list of banned substances no truly independent testing of the results for tests, and that he had no access to the sample he was entitled to have tested himself. What was the judge's response? There's a high likelihood the test was flawed, and the judge has granted a temporary injunction allowing Mayfield to race. But NASCAR's Brian France says he has irrefutable evidence to prove Mayfield's guilt. Irrefutable. I wonder which part of the term reasonable doubt France has missed. He better hope it's irrefutable, or he can outlawyer Mayfield, because if NASCAR loses, and they can, O.J. Simpson's so-called dream team of lawyers is going to look like Spanky in our gang compared to the battery of counselors who are going to line up to sue NASCAR on Mayfield's behalf. Nobody's going to win here, ladies and gentlemen, but you can bet your life somebody's going to lose, and they're going to lose big. The Jeremy Mayfield saga, we got a lot of stuff going on there. The court's now back in court. NASCAR is now trying to repeal uh, the decision that the judge made. Talk about that a little bit because uh, Mayfield looks to have the upper hand here. He looks to have the upper hand, but he doesn't have the money to have the upper hand. And the, and the deal is NASCAR does. It's, unless, what they've done, NASCAR has put themselves in a position to where they want to fight this because they don't want to admit that they may have a flawed drug testing system. They consider themselves unique, that it's a very fast sport, much more dangerous than performance enhancing drugs and things like that. But short of, I mean, the judge, when you go into a situation like this, a judge can look at this, a smart judge, and say, you know what? You've got one guy over here that you have destroyed his career. No matter what happens, he's destroyed now. And you've got the 12 disciples. You've got a huge battery of lawyers on your side and you intend to beat him to death, but your system may be flawed. You didn't send those samples off to two separate labs, you sent them to one lab. And, and I think that personally, unless they can prove that Jeremy Mayfield is breaking bad and is running a meth lab, I think NASCAR is going to lose. Well, I, I look at the overall situation. These guys may need to have 
may have to change their policy uh, to go take A to one facility and B to another facility to make sure it's right. The problem is it takes four to five days and you got guys in these cars, you right. 42 other guys that Jeremy Mayfield tested positive on their test. Guess what? We need to pull them out of the car because it's much too dangerous for the other 42 drivers out okay, there. Okay, so everybody else, uh, including Jimmy Johnson, who takes uh, allergy medication, which will test positive for meth, for morphine, God knows what else. Zantac will do that. Every driver out there has to worry about an instant test because if they pull them out of the car, and here's a scenario for you, Tony Stewart's leading the points. He tests positive for anything that they call a banned substance. I've yet to see a list, by the way. They pull him out of the car. He loses the championship because of it. You think there's going to be a lawsuit there? I think so. No, I agree with you. There is going to be a huge lawsuit. But then I also look at the side where the judge says, okay, Jeremy Mayfield's allowed to race. Okay, NASCAR goes out and says, all right, he comes to the track. We're going to test him again. The problem is the test takes four to five days. Let's say you get there on a Thursday. You're not going to have the test done. And even if they could get it done in a day or two, what happens to say if he gets there Thursday, Saturday, he doesn't take something by Sunday. He's all drugged up again on some allegedly i'm just saying that this is a possibility i'm not yeah. saying that's what he does but there's those cases as well how do they get this down and figure it all out i don't know and neither do they yeah. and that's the problem what you're going to have you're going to have 12 people sitting on a jury who are going to go who are going to be challenged with the concept and with the the opinion of reasonable doubt and, and when that happens the best thing, the best scenario that I can think of is that from a PR perspective right now, they need to be sitting down with Mayfield and talking to him and put the lawyers aside for a while and get into the smoky dark room, have a few cigars and go, we got a problem here. Let's try to fix this together. I mean, there has to be, if there could possibly be a win-win. Brian France says he's got irrefutable evidence. I have never heard of such a thing outside of a video uh, from a you know a store shooting or something like that, and even that can be beaten. There's no such thing. When you get into a courtroom, ladies and gentlemen, truth is an abstract. It is an abstract. It's whatever you're being pitched. I mean, it's a great justice system we have in the United States. Beats them all, trumps them all. But right now, you're in a civil case, and NASCAR is going to have to show their hand. They're going to have to show more in a civil case than they would if it were a criminal trial. The Battle of the Hatfields and the McCoys is not going away anytime soon. NASCAR filed more papers on Monday against Jeremy Mayfield. Mayfield responded by producing his own lab test results performed by LabCorp, a top national medical testing company. They were negative, NASCARs were positive. Looks like this is heading down to the 12 angry men path with no justice at the end. And this thing's None. amazing. All the stuff that has come out in this story from his stepmother to NASCAR, I mean, they're calling names. It's unbelievable what's going on right now. It's damaging, it's, it's, it's damaging NASCAR more, by far more as a sport than it's damaging Mayfield. Mayfield is devastated, done, over with. He's got nothing to lose and never forget there's nothing more dangerous than a guy that's got nothing to lose.